This Primavera P6 tutorial demonstrates the use of the Resource Assignments window. I'm currently on the Activities window, so I'm going to go over to my directory bar and click Assignments. The Resource Assignments window lets you view and add resource and role assignments to activities in the currently opened projects. You're also able to display, using the Resource Usage Spreadsheet, resource or role cost and or quantity information over time. You can also manually enter budgeted and remaining units using the Resource Assignments window. Before we get started, let's address the components of the Resource Assignments window. Over, over here on the left is the Activity Resource Assignment pane. I'm going to move my vertical split bar just a second. This is just basically a layout displaying the resources and the activities they're scheduled to work on. Up at the top left is my Layout Options bar. If I click there, I can change the layout I can toggle the assignment details. So if I click off the assignment details, you'll see the bottom layout goes away. I'm going to turn that back on. I can also toggle off and on quickly the resource usage spreadsheet over here on the right. So I'll unclick that and click it back on. Additionally, in the layout options bar, I can change the columns that are displayed, the table font and row. I can apply filters and change the way that the layout is currently grouped and sorted. When I look at the group and sort, you'll see that there are some standard ways that I might uh, typically want to group my layout, or I can click Customize. Right now my layout is grouped by resource. So what I'm able to see for Paul Kim as the resource are the activities that Paul Kim is scheduled to work on. Over here on the right, the Resource Usage Spreadsheet, I'm able to see units or cost for each one of those activities displayed over time. Let's start up at the top with the time scale. I can see that my major time scale is week at this point, and my minor time scale is day. If I point to the major time scale and click my mouse and drag it to the left or the right, you'll see that that becomes a scroll bar. If I click in a minor time scale, such as the day Wednesday, my mouse becomes a magnifying glass, allowing me to expand or contract the width of the cell. Additionally, on the resource usage spreadsheet, I have a display options bar. So if I click there, I can change the time scale. But more importantly, I can come down to spreadsheet fields and change the fields that are displayed in the spreadsheet. If I click Customize, you'll see that I can display cumulative data and or time interval data. And there's quite a bit of data that can be displayed in this manner. We're currently displaying remaining units and actual units. At the bottom, I've got my assignment details. And I can use the assignment details to view and modify assignments. On the General tab, for example, I can see that the, uh, the name of the activity, the resource, resource currently assigned to the activity, and the role of that resource. I can see a cost account, if it has been assigned, and the price per unit for that resource assignment. Over here to the right, I can see the rate type of that unit. In this instance, it's commercial, but you can see the other uh, rate types that I can select from. I can also go to the Planning tab and actually change these various units. Now let's uh, adjust our resource usage spreadsheet for a second. If I come up to the Display and I go to my Spreadsheet fields and to Customize, I can change my layout from displaying units to displaying cost. So I'm first going to remove the existing display options and I'll expand costs and I'm going to add actual costs and remaining early costs and click OK. So now I can see for each one of my activities to which Paul Kim has been 
allocated, I can see remaining early costs and any actual costs. If I scroll to the week of, let's say, January 10th, I can come down to the general tab, for example, and let's just focus on activity A1000, and I can change the rate type. So, for example, right now my rate is $240. I can change it to GSA rates. You can see that the rate per hour now changes to 27, and that's now reflected on that activity. So that's a quick way to do some quick changes. I'm going to revert back to commercial. Now for the remainder of this tutorial, I would prefer to have units displayed. So I'm going to just quickly go back to the original uh, display of this layout. So if I go to my left pane display options and open remaining versus actual, and say I don't want to save the changes, I'll get back to my original display, which was remaining units and actual units. And I'll go ahead and scroll back to uh, January. So I'm going to focus first of all on the week of January 17th. So once again I can see that the resource we're focusing on is Paul Kim. Paul Kim's assigned to work on six activities. What I'm able to see for Paul Kim are the activities he's working on and the specific days of the week. Those, la those units then roll up so I can see a total number of hours that Paul Kim is scheduled to work on by day. And I can see for the week of January 17th that he's quite over allocated. He's scheduled to work 16 hours per day for the entire week. So what we're able to do here is to actually change his allocations. So for example, if I highlight activity A1030, I can quickly change or replace Paul Kim with a different resource to help take up the slack here with these resource hours. So I'll highlight A1030 and I'll come down to the general tab where it says resource and I'll click the browse button and I'm going to search for another resource, specifically Jill Morgan. So when I do that I can now see that Paul Kim is no longer allocated to A1030. Let me press the refresh button. Paul Kim is no longer allocated to A1030, but Jill Morgan is. Let's scroll to the week of January 24th. I can see that once again Paul Kim is over allocated for the uh, three days in the week of January 24th and some of the days of January 31st. And those activities uh, that he's scheduled to work on are A1020 and A1040. So once again I'm going to replace Paul Kim on activity A1040 with Jill Morgan. And I'll refresh by pressing F5. So here I can see that that's corrected the over allocation of Paul Kim by replacing him with Jill Morgan. Now I'm going to scroll back to the week of January 10th and I can see that Paul Kim has some actual units for activity A1030. If I come down to my planning tab I can see that there were in fact 40 actual units reported for Paul Kim on that activity. If I change that to 42 units you'll see how the display changes uh, accordingly. And again, I'll press F5. I'm now going to focus on activity A1050, and I'm going to scroll to the week of January 31st. Notice for activity A1050 that Paul Kim's hours are not displayed in a linear way. I want to see how that strategy occurred, so I'm going to go up to my layout options bar on the left pane and I'm going to add a column. And the column that I'm going to add is going to be resource curve. 
So when I add the column, I can see for that activity that a resource curve called front loaded has been assigned to that activity. And that explains how those resource units were to, uh, distributed. If I were to come down to the planning tab and go to those remaining units and change those remaining units from 40 hours to 50 hours, you'll see how that display would change accordingly, how his hours would once again be distributed based on that front-loaded curve. There are many other options that you can use in this display. It is a very useful, useful tool for helping you to identify resource over allocation and to correct it. I hope this tutorial was useful for you.